press the bell icon on the YouTube app to never miss a video from News Laundry. In case you didn't notice, we have a lot of political parties, like a lot of them. So many that sometimes it's hard for me to keep a track of what the pyramid party of India is up to during a particular election. Pyramid party, really? How re? It's a real party. Pata raha hai ko. Anyway, last week, Home Minister Amit Shah made a statement and raised some doubts about our glorious multi-party democracy. After 70 years of freedom, every person in the mind of the country was asked about what is our multi-party democracy? पार्लियामेंट्री डेमोक्रेटिक सिस्टम कहीं फेल तो नहीं कर गई है मल्टी पार्टी पार्लियामेंट्री डेमोक्रेटिक सिस्टम हमारे गोल हमारे लक्ष्य की सिद्धि कर पाएगी क्या ऐसे भारत की रचना कर पाएगी जो हमें जो हमारे संविधान निर्माताओं ने की थी सो द क्वेश्चन इज इज ही राइट हैज आर मल्टी पार्टी डेमोक्रेसी फेल्ड इन द सेवेंटी ईयर्स बिफोर बीजेपी केम टू पावर Let's talk about the why first. Why are we a democracy where there are more than 2300 registered political parties? Yes, you heard that right, 2300 plus. Actually, between 1st of April and 19th of August, 93 new parties have been registered. And this includes glorious names like Fauji Kisan Party, Professional Party of India, Hum Ek Hai Party, and my favorite, Supreme Zero Party of Bharat. That's the one I'm going to me too. It's registered in Orissa and the address is here. We are both going to Orissa. Chal migrate karte hai, Parikshit. So, why exactly do we have so many parties? The simple answer to this question is representation of various interests. If you would have noticed, India is an ultra diverse country. We have multiple languages, belief systems, caste, genders, professions, food choices, social hierarchies and even economic differences. Each of these groups of people need a representation in our parliament and assemblies. Political parties are formed based on these differences. While one party, like the Bahujan Samaj party, speaks about the issues of Dalits and marginalized, there is another party called the Indian Business Party, which represents, well, businessmen. Yes, Parikshit, don't look at me like that. Actual party hai. Address bhi hai paas. So, you can form a party based on any issue you feel needs representation. You can form a party based on Gandhian thoughts or Indira Gandhi thoughts. True story. You can form a party for cool students with a Z in the spelling and one on just Indian aspirations. Yeah, again, all of these are registered parties. Whether you get support for your ideas is another question. But the point being that political parties represent special interest groups. Now the trick is to form parties that deal with multiple issues and represent a whole lot more people at the same time. That's what national parties like Bharatiya Janata Party or Indian National Congress are. They try to get as many votes as possible by representing as many people as possible. Their election manifestos will try to appeal to every single voter as opposed to a specific group of people. But that is where diversity gets, well, diluted. Now let's talk about regional parties. Think about parties like Biju Janata Dal, Trinamool Congress, Maharashtra Navnirman Sena, Dravida Munnetra Kharagam. They are appealing primarily to the Odia, Bengali, Marathi and Tamil population. While something like the BJP will try and appeal to all of them together, those regional parties don't try that. BJP might feel candidates from these regions who understand the culture of the region, but candidates don't really matter in the larger scheme of things. Because anti-defection. Anti-defection, exactly. If you don't know what anti-defection is, just understand one simple thing. Your representatives don't have the free will to vote. They vote according to the will of the party. More on that here. So, yeah. In a multi-party system like ours, it's technically possible to have 543 different candidates from 543 different parties, all representing different bases of voters, sitting in the Lok Sabha and somehow forming a coalition government. It is also possible for 543 members to be from a single party. Simply put, 
if we have just one or two party system, it is unlikely that everyone's issues will ever be raised or addressed. What would be addressed are the issues of the majority. A, a second, a second. Before you think of Hindu majority and Hindi majority, let me tell you that even if you are a part of this majority, your views still might not be represented. For instance, here's a random thought. If you are a woman, you might have a better chance of pushing for 33% reservations in parliament if you support an all-women party. Say, the All India Women Democratic Freedom Party or National Women's Party. And they are real too? They are real. Yes, they are real, Parikshit. And sisters, address Lelo. In conclusion, a country as diverse as India needs a multi-party system because it's virtually impossible for a single party to represent every segment of the population. If we don't have that, it will practically kill the diversity and turn us into a homogeneous mass of people who have to believe in the majoritarian views.